ladies and gentlemen, uh, I've received a donation specifically for a video stating that Mycenae is Greek. And I figure that'll be easy enough. I'll just go right to uh, ch what, chapter 3 of the uh, History of the Ancient World by Chester Starr, and I'll quote the Dorian Invasion. Now, if you think there's any significant difference, it's chapter 9, titled The Beginnings of Greek Civilization. We're on page 189. If you think there's any difference between the Greek people and the Macedonian people, see what you think after you hear this stuff. I'm going to go back to before the Greeks, um, the Greeks we think of, you know, Plato and Aristotle and Alexander the Great. We're going to go 700 years before their time, plus or minus a century. We're back in the 1200s BC, before Christ. And civilization was sort of falling apart. There was, um, all, cities were coming to an end, systems of, of writing that had been in use for centuries were disappearing, um, and it was, seems to have been invasions from the north, these people called the Dorians. So down on, in Greece proper, the original inhabitants were pushed up into the highlands and down onto the south into the peninsula and off into several islands and clear over into Greece, Anatolia. So let me read now from page 189. The Mycenaean world seems to have been declining by the 13th century BC, but a violent invasion, remembered as the coming of the Dorians, brought it to an end just after 1200. So it was declining, and maybe it would have been able to fight this off, but not when it was in a decline. The Dorians swept across the southern islands through Crete and Rhodes to the opposite coast, um, pushing the other people in front of them as they went, and uh, some of them stayed in the Greek highlands, and that was to be true for centuries and centuries as the original inhabitants of the uh, Greek area went up into the highlands, like the Native Americans, let's imagine, in, in America went up into the mountains and lived for centuries, um, sort of like that. But the point is that Macedonia up above Greece and the Greeks we think, think of as Greeks are all the same people. And they, were, they owned the place from the, about a thousand on down. They came in. It was theirs now, except for some people herding goats up in the high mountains. And at the very tip down around Sparta, throughout the south and the east parts of the Peloponnesus, including Sparta, Argos, Corinth, uh, in those areas, the Dorians were dominant. Just to show that uh, the, the, what we think of as Macedonia, uh, the area above Greece, and Greece proper, they are the same people. And now, it, it makes a lot of sense when you realize that Alexander the Great and Aristotle were both from Macedonia. And a lot of the major players in Greek history were from Macedonia and it's r really ridiculous to cut it off and say this area up here is special and different from Greece or this area down here is special and different from that. This is... Macedonia is a Greek. It's Greek. Now I wouldn't go as far as to put the whole of Turkey as Greece, but it is certainly part of the greater Greek sphere. Macedonia is more than that. Macedonia is in what we would have to consider the realm of Greece. Like I said, uh, Ireland is British. Scotland is British. Those are the British Isles. So continuing on page 190, Dorians, Ionians, and others are not to be visualized as distinct races. They were all Greek, and they shared in the common qualities of the mother tongue. This was a remarkably supple speech, so now let's di digress just for a moment. It's a digression from the subject, but what the hell. This is about the Greek language. A very supple speech, which possessed from the earliest days characteristics of keen logical analysis, a tendency to abstraction and to causal constructions, and a poetic outlook. That's a lot to say for a language. The languages of the Near East could not begin to rival the ability of Greek to set forth clearly and briefly a chain of ideas and to balance in one sentence, by means of a host of qualifying particles, a complex concept. So it's a very highly developed and intellectual language where the tools that they built into it accidentally or somehow for some reason are quite uh, becoming of uh, the intellect being able to put complex stuff together you don't have to speak in short sentences there are enough tools so you can modify words and in Greek 
I'll just spend one more second on this. In Greek, you modify the end of the word to tell you about the thing, rather than having its position in the ten sentence to tell you about the thing. In English, you've got to have certain words in certain areas of the sentence. In Greek, you can do it all any way you want. It makes it easier to rhyme, for example, because you've just got to get the right endings on the words, and that's it. Difficult to study, but a very powerful and poetic language, once you do. And the last uh, quote I have here, in at least some cases we can see the Dorian invasion brought real change. Politically, for instance, the wide ruling lords of the Mycenaean palaces vanished together with their bureaucracies. Greek lands turned decisively away from this imitation of Near Eastern monarchy to a far simpler system. Local leaders who called themselves kings ruled only tiny areas, and though in Homer these kings boasted their descent from Zeus, they were little more than war chiefs. So that's what happened when civilization collapsed. But after that, it was the ha in the hands of people who had come down from Macedonia and above. So, there you go. Don't just forget about the question of whether uh, Macedonia should be independent from Greece or whatever. Put it together in a nice big country. Bigger country, the better. That's what I say.